Hello and welcome to another very entertaining video. As we start thinking about endocrinology, today's topic is growth hormone. And as this is the first in a series of several hormones that we're going to look at, I wanted to kind of highlight a strategy for thinking about how to study and understand these hormones in terms of endocrine signaling. But before we do that, I want to talk just in general about growth hormone. If we created a graph, let's put time on the x-axis, starting with birth, childhood, puberty, adult life, and then what's nicely called senescence, getting really old. And on the y-axis, let's graph growth hormone release. I don't think it would surprise anybody what this graph looks like. Pretty low at birth, decent at childhood, spikes around puberty, a little bit down in adult life, but hopefully maintaining fairly consistent levels. And then as we transition toward death, fairly low. So if we graph this out over time, we see a fairly interesting pattern arise. Now it is important to point out what growth hormone is doing in an adult, right? We're done growing, and so what's the value of growth hormone? Well, this is about maintenance of lean body mass. This includes bone mass. These things are accomplished by regulating, for example, processes like lipolysis and aspects of metabolism, specifically carbohydrate metabolism. And so understanding growth hormone and its patterns and its release and what regulates that, the secretagogues, the secretagogues that regulate it, these are important things to understand. And this is, this is what we want to understand by the end of our discussion on growth hormone. So how do we approach it? Well, the best place to start is in understanding where growth hormone comes from and how to regulate it. Now remember, growth hormone itself comes from the anterior pituitary, and so it is regulated by secretions from the hypothalamus. So that's where we want to start. The hypothalamus releases a releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, GHRH. And this is going to signal the anterior pituitary. And remember, this communication happens through a portal system called the hypophyseal portal system. And the effective GHRH on the anterior pituitary is the release of growth hormone. Now, as you look at this, I hope you're asking, what regulates GHRH? How do we increase or decrease levels of GHRH? Well, there are three key triggers that we want to discuss. Stress. This could be physical stress. It could be emotional stress. It could be dietary stress. Another big one is exercise. And lastly, sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, which primarily accounts for the big spike that we see during puberty. There are a couple of lesser players, at least one that I think is worth mentioning. Ghrelin which is released from the stomach in response to hunger, can also stimulate GHRH. Before we move on to understanding how growth hormone actually works, as we think about this system with the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary, one of the things that I want you to get into the habit of doing is thinking about feedback. These are the things that stimulate it, but in all of these instances, we want negative feedback. When growth hormone levels are too high, we're going to shut the system off. For example, growth hormone itself will block the effects of ghrelin, decreasing, therefore, GHRH and reducing the amounts of growth hormone released. The biggest system for negative feedback of growth hormone is, a, is somatostatin. Just like we saw in the gut, somatostatin is the general off switch for growth hormone. It's also known in the brain as growth hormone inhibitory hormone, or GHIH. And somatostatin is stimulated by growth hormone and works to block the release of GHRH and inhibits growth hormone. So there's the negative feedback. As growth hormone levels increase, so do somatostatin levels, which block the production of more and release of more growth hormone. This is what we call negative feedback. All right, with the regulation of these hormones now taken care of, let's next consider what growth hormone actually does. We're going to talk about two effects that growth hormone has. One of them is a major effect, and the other more minor. The major effect of growth hormone is its function in the liver. The liver is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to help regulate blood glucose levels for energy expenditure, and it's also going to release a hormone called insulin-like growth factor. Now, this is only related to insulin structurally. It doesn't really have a lot of similarity into how it, it behaves. We'll talk more about what it does in just a second, but I want to turn to the sugar regulation that growth hormone has on the liver. 
And we're going to see a couple of different things. We're going to see an increase in gluconeogenesis. So the liver is actually going to start making more glucose. And this is going to lead to an increase in glucose released into the blood. So growth hormone is one of the hormones that we will discuss that has a significant effect on blood glucose levels. Now, let's take a closer look at what insulin-like growth factor is doing. It's released from the liver as a growth factor and is going to spread through endocrine signaling to all the cells in the body. The tissues where we find receptors for insulin-like growth factor include bone, muscle, adipose, and also heart. These all express insulin-like growth factor receptor. And mostly, this is about hypertrophy. This is about initiating growth, except for adipose. For example, in muscle and heart, we see an increased amino acid uptake. And this is going to allow for increased protein synthesis. And it's not surprising, people with chronically elevated levels of growth hormone, such as Andre the Giant as an example, tend to die at a fairly early age from heart disease because of the hypertrophy associated with signaling on the heart. But we mentioned that adipose was different. What we're doing with adipose, we're actually increasing lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fat. And of course, this is necessary because this leads to an increase in beta oxidation by the mitochondria, and that's going to give us energy, energy to build the other stuff that we're building. Now, growth hormone itself actually stimulates these things as well. But the key player for all of this is actually insulin-like growth factor. That's why we kind of gave growth hormone a small arrow. So if we zoom out and take a look at the big picture, we see the hypothalamic control of growth hormone release from the anterior pituitary. And growth hormone's primary job is to stimulate the liver. Following growth hormone in the liver, the liver's going to release IGF. And IGF, binding to IGF receptor in bone and muscle, adipose and heart, is going to drive hypertrophy, increased amino acid uptake, increased protein synthesis at the expense of fat. This is how growth hormone maintains lean body mass because it's primarily using fat as its energy source as it works to increase blood glucose levels through an increase in gluconeogenesis and increased glucose then released into the blood. As part of the feedback, growth hormone itself drives the release of somatostatin, which specifically inhibits growth hormone releasing hormone, growth hormone, and I might add somatostatin is also an inhibitor of the effects of IGF. And so as you transition into adulthood or whatever stage you're in, recognize that exercise is key to maintaining and balancing growth hormone levels throughout your adult life, leading to increased lean body mass and supporting a healthy lifestyle.